Welcome to another episode of our Dan Education Series. Today we'll be talking about diabetes and diving. When it comes to diabetes and diving, I'm going to start with a punchline, and that is what diabetics should have available. They should have rescue medications on hand, readily available, which includes oral glucose during all dives. They should have parenteral, which means injectable, glucagon available at the surface in countries where this is available. If low blood sugar is noticed underwater, the diver should surface with their buddy, establish positive buoyancy, ingest glucose and leave the water. They should then check their blood sugar frequently for 12 to 15 hours after diving. In addition, they should ensure adequate hydration on all the days they dive and log the blood glucose test result information relevant to diabetes management. So there's the punchline. Now for the meat and potatoes as they would say. The guidelines on diabetes and recreational diving have a very interesting history. First of all, diabetes is actually quite a common disease. It affects millions of people worldwide it is roughly estimated that about 6% of South Africans are affected by it and insulin dependent diabetes affects about half a million people in the United States out of which 150,000 are younger than 19 years old. Many people continue to be productive members of the community and pursue various interests, careers, despite having diabetes. However, when it comes to diving and diving medicine, the diving medical community has maintained a very conservative position, particularly regarding insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. In fact, for many years it has been an absolute contraindication to diving. However, recognizing that many divers dive successfully either openly or without telling anybody with their diabetes, it has ultimately reached the stage where it is necessary to acknowledge the fact that divers do dive with insulin dependent diabetes and the position regarding this should be readdressed. And that's exactly what happened at a workshop that was held and jointly sponsored by the Undersea and Hyperbaric Medical Society and Divers Alert Network in 2005 in Las Vegas, Nevada. This workshop brought together experts interested from all walks of medicine and diving who had a vested interest in diving with diabetes. The participants in the workshop looked at existing data and discuss the concerns in order to develop a final consensus. The guidelines addressing diabetes and recreational diving. The issues concerning professional diving require separate deliberations and are not discussed here. The consensus guidelines that were released relate to recreational diving and must allow for flexibility related to the community's needs. This consensus reflects a more inclusive approach and provides guidelines on how individuals may evaluate their fitness to dive and how to keep it safe and how to remain qualified to dive as long as possible. Not everyone with diabetes who wishes to dive will be able to do so because there are conditions and states of diabetes that would make diving too risky for divers to dive. And this also needs to be recognized. So the guidelines are designed for individual divers who are primarily responsible for their own health and safety. They should adhere to these guidelines as they were developed 
to improve and protect them as well as their dive buddies. The guidelines also aim to assist primary physicians and diving physicians who are in charge or responsible for evaluating and monitoring divers with diabetes. Other divers should be aware of these guidelines as well and be mindful of them and the special considerations, particularly when they are buddied up with divers who have diabetes. And it's only fair that your dive buddy should know if you suffer from diabetes. As mentioned before, six out of every 100 South African adults is affected by diabetes. And there are various conditions related to diabetes that would make diving too risky. So, how do we decide who qualifies for recreational diving and how should they be monitored? Well, first of all, individuals with diabetes who wish to dive should undergo the same diving medical fitness evaluation as other candidates to ensure, firstly, that there are no other exclusionary conditions such as epilepsy or pulmonary disease or heart disease and secondly that they haven't developed complications of diabetes that would put them at additional risk. They should be at least 18 years or older, 16 if it is in a special training program, it should be with well-established treatment regimens and well-established plasma glucose levels that are able to be sustained effectively during the demands of daily living activities. Candidates with diabetes who undergo or diving medical examinations should do so annually if they are over the age of 40 and should be regularly evaluated for so-called silent cardiovascular disease after that. What that means is that people who do not suffer diabetes would experience angina if their coronary arteries don't deliver sufficient oxygen. But that may not be the case with people with diabetes and they may suffer so-called silent ischemia or lack of oxygen. So how to dive? Candidates who pass the fitness evaluation and master regular scuba training must also learn to adhere to the diabetic diving protocol. And they should only dive in comfortable environment and conditions that do not involve an inability to return back to the surface at any point which means they should never dive in situations where there are overhead obstacles or obligatory in-water decompression stops. In other words, they should always be able to ascend immediately to the surface. Diving should not exceed a depth of 30 meters in the sea and it should not be longer than an hour. There should not be any obligatory decompression stops. Divers with diabetes should dive with a buddy who is informed of their condition and is aware of the appropriate response and willing to assist in the case of a low blood sugar or hypoglycemic episode. It is recommended that the buddy does not have diabetes so that you don't have two individuals with diabetes diving together. So how do you manage glucose on the day of diving? Well there are guidelines for this. Divers with diabetes whose medication may put them at risk for low blood sugar should follow a protocol to manage their health on the day of diving. Divers with diabetes should carry oral glucose in readily accessible and ingestible form at the surface and in fact during all their dives. Many sachets and similar devices are available nowadays that make it easy to actually drink glucose containing solutions underwater. It is strongly recommended where available 
that injectable glucagon be made available at the surface. The dive buddy or other person at the surface should be knowledgeable about using glucagon. If symptoms indicate low blood sugar or hypoglycemia, the diver should establish positive buoyancy, ingest glucose and leave the water. An informed buddy should be with them to assist them throughout the process. They should use the L signal which is putting the index finger and thumb in that position to signal that there is suspected low blood sugar. The blood glucose levels should be checked at the end of every dive and appropriate responses to measured levels can be determined by the individual and should be written down in their logbooks. And they should be mindful of this as part of the plans for the rest of the day. It should be noted that the requirements for blood glucose may change or stay the same on subsequent dives. And it should also be recognized that there may be late decrements in blood glucose, which is why it is strongly recommended that blood glucose levels are checked frequently for at least 12 to 15 hours after diving. Divers with diabetes are strongly recommended to pay attention to hydration on the days of diving. Elevated blood glucose will increase diuresis, in other words, urine uh, volume increase. And while data is limited, it is suggested that individuals with diabetes actually also have blood thickening or an increase in hematocrit, which makes it even more difficult for blood to circulate. So adequate ingestion of fluids is recommended. Divers with diabetes should log all their dives and the associated diabetic interventions and the results of all the blood glucose tests that were conducted during diving. And this log can then be used for future planning in relation to diving. So, what are the guidelines for recreational diving with diabetes? Basically, and in summary, there should be appropriate selection and surveillance to begin with. Age should be in 18 years or 16 years if it is in a special training program. Diving should be delayed if there is a change in medication. And this should be up to three months if it is oral hypoglycemic agents. And it should be a year after initiation of insulin therapy before undertaking diving. There should be no episodes of hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia requiring intervention by a third party for at least one year. In other words, no need to go to hospital for at least a year. There should be no history of hypoglycemia unawareness. What is meant by that is that some individuals cannot feel when their blood sugar goes low. They don't get the shakes or the tremors or essentially the stress response that the body uses to indicate that blood sugar is low. Their HbA1c, which is a fancy way of saying the glucose a quantity that is bound to hemoglobin, should be 9%. No more than one month prior to the initial assessment and at each annual review. If it is more than 9%, it indicates that further evaluation would be necessary to modify their diabetes care. There should be no significant secondary complications from diabetes and the physician and diabetologist should carry out annual reviews and determine that the diver has a good understanding of their disease and the effect of exercise. It should always be undertaken in consultation with an expert in diving medicine, especially if there is an area of uncertainty. As already mentioned, individuals over the age of 40 should be evaluated for silent ischemia of the heart. 
and after the initial examination, this should typically be done annually. The candidate should document their intent to follow the protocol for divers with diabetes as part of their diving medical and cease diving and seek medical review in the case of any adverse events during diving that are possibly related to diabetes. What about the scope of diving? Well, divers need to be sensible. Diving should be done so as to allow an immediate return to the surface as mentioned earlier. So, don't dive deeper than 30 meters. Don't dive longer than an hour. Don't do dives that require compulsory decompression stops. Don't dive in overhead environments such as wrecks or caves and particularly cave penetration. Don't dive in situations that may exacerbate hypoglycemia such as prolonged cold or arduous dives. The dive buddy and or dive leader should be informed of the diver's condition and the steps to follow in the case of a problem. The dive buddy should not have diabetes. Lastly, glucose management on the day of diving. The general self-assessment test for fitness to dive should be performed as follows. The blood glucose level should be about 8.3 millimoles per litre, which is a roughly 150 milligrams per deciliter. It should be stable or it should be rising before the individual enters the water. And in order to determine this, three tests are done. An hour, half an hour, and immediately prior to diving. Sometimes it may be helpful to change the dosage of oral hypoglycemic agents or insulin the evening before diving. That will ensure that blood glucose levels are at the adequate thresholds in order to dive. If blood glucose levels are less than 8.3 millimoles, then diving should not be undertaken. Conversely, if they are more than 16.7, which is 300 milligrams per deciliter, diving should also not be undertaken. For a full text, we refer you to the Divers Alert Network workshop on diabetes and recreational diving, the guidelines for the future and proceedings of the UHMS DAN workshop. Thank you for watching this DAN education video on diabetes and diving.